we're going to be taking a closer look at series of sequences and uh, particularly we're going to be looking at geometric series okay now in geometric series we have this thing called a sum to infinity okay so as my geometric series goes down we're going to try and find okay when we add all these uh, terms that go to infinity okay that will give me some sort of limiting sum okay and that's what we're going to be looking at okay in a geometric series what is the limiting sum for that series now there's a formula for that so we have s which is the sum so sum to infinity is this formula a over 1 minus r okay and it says that for when r is in between negative 1 and 1 now sum to infinity okay with a subscript infinity there okay like i said is a sum to infinity and hopefully by now we know that a is the first term and r is my cone ratio okay so this is the important formula that we need to, that we need to know and also the fact that my common ratio in the geometric series needs to be in between the value of negative one and one okay and we'll later on see why that's the case now let's start off by trying to prove that formula okay so again this is the formula that we want to prove okay and again for when r is in between negative one and one okay so let's try and prove it now sum to infinity is another way of saying okay like i said it's a limiting sum so when i have the limit as n approaches to infinity then the sum of that uh, n, okay, n being the number of terms, and I want it to infinity. Okay, that's the sum to infinity, infinity number of terms. So now that sum to n, any sum of a geometric series, we can replace with our series formula. Okay, so this is a geometric series sum formula, which is just represented by Sn. So if you rewrite that formula, okay, just rewrite your limit as n approaches to infinity, and we have this formula. Okay, so hopefully we should recall this uh, geometric series sum formula. Now, we, uh, hopefully we know that there are two versions of it, okay? The first one is a r to the power of n minus 1, and on the bottom is r minus 1, okay? Or we have this one, where we have 1 minus r to the power of n and 1 minus r, okay? Like I said, they are two of the same formulas, but the reason why we prefer to use uh, this form, where it's 1 minus r, is because my value of r is in between negative 1 and 1, okay? Which means that it's a lot easier to calculate when I just take away one from a number that's smaller than one. Okay, so that's why we use this preferred method or this preferred formula. Okay, but like I said, it's the same thing. Now, r to the power of infinity is equal to zero. Now, what significance does that make? Well, if I have the sum of, oh sorry, the limit of as n approaches to infinity, and I just put infinity to the n, so r to the power of n, which is r to the power of infinity, is going to be zero. Now, why is it zero? Well, r, the value of r, is going to be between negative one and one. So for example, like 0 0.5. Okay, then any number that's less than one to the power of a really big number, like infinity, is going to equal to zero. Okay, so if I just put that in there, so if I just put as n approaches to infinity, we know that the value of r to the power of infinity will be zero. Okay, then if we simplify, then left, we are left with this sum formula. Okay, so this is my limiting sum formula, or in other words, it's my sum to infinity, okay, for a geometric series. So hopefully you understood how to prove it, okay, so it's a, lot, it's a nice theoretical uh, understanding. Now let's try and use this formula, okay, so let's try and actually find the limiting sum for some sort of geometric series. So in question two, it says find the sum to infinity of 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 and so on. Okay, so like I said, we want the sum to infinity, so, just, so just, this uh, series should just go on to infinity number of terms. Now, the first thing we've got to consider is uh, finding the common ratio. Okay, so finding the common ratio, we can do that by, in a geometric series, we can just divide the second term by the first term, okay, just the one before it, and we see that, okay, the common ratio is half, okay, 0 0.5. And also, this is my sum formula, okay, and we know what A is, A is my first term. So, if I put all my values into my formula, so a equals to 16, which is my first term. Now, 1 minus my common ratio, which we found was 0 0.5, okay? And also, we can see that the common ratio is 0 0.5, meaning that it's in between negative 1 and 1, which means this sort of thing, this sort of uh, geometric series, will have some sort of limiting sum. So, if I just simplify this down, put it into a calculator, and we find, oh, the sum to infinity is equal to 32. 
Okay, so if you're not quite sure about the concept of sum to infinities, just try and think of it as, so we're going to keep going down, okay, so we're going to keep going down by halves, then 2 will become, the next term will be 1, the next term will be 0 0.5, next term will be 0 0.25, it gets smaller and smaller because my common ratio is less than 1, meaning as I keep going down, the number is going to get smaller and smaller, meaning I will have some sort of limiting sum. When I add all those little terms, there will be some limiting sum. Okay, now the converse of that is if my ratio was say greater than 1, like 2, if my r was 2, then my numbers will just keep getting larger and larger. So if we just keep adding larger and larger numbers, we'll just get a just big number. So we don't have a limiting sum. Okay, but if my common ratio is in between negative 1 and 1 like this, then there will be that stopping point, that end point, which is my sum to infinity, which we also like to describe as my limiting sum. So let's take a look at question three. So question three kind of uh, amplifies what I said. So it says to find the sum to infinity of 100 uh, plus 120 plus 144 and so on. And this is in a geometric series. So first thing I'm going to do is find my common ratio. So again, let's just take a term and divide it by the one right before it. So if I do that, then okay, so I get a common ratio of 1.2. Okay, but the question is, I want to find the sum to infinity. But if my common ratio is 1.2, meaning it's outside of that range of negative 1 and 1, then we should not really, we shouldn't have a limiting sum for this question. Okay, so the sum to infinity does not exist as r equals to 1.2 does not lie between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so that's the theoretical understanding that we need to have for uh, limiting sums.